This ECE 201 lesson titled The Thevenin Equivalent Circuit is going to discuss how even quite complicated linear circuits can be reduced to one voltage source in series with one resistor. Not only does this offer us the opportunity of greatly simplifying circuits, but it also is going to provide us with some practical insight into transferring power from a circuit to a load attached to the terminals at the output of that circuit. Let's begin this discussion by uh, looking at a circuit that we've divided into two parts. So we have originally a circuit, but now we've divided it up into a part A and a part B. And we're going to leave part B untouched. However, we want to simplify part A. Let's say that this part A has at least one source in it, one independent source. Perhaps it has many sources, many resistors. It can have any number of linear components. For the time being, at least for this lesson, we are going to exclude dependent sources. However, that will be covered in another lesson. But there will be a voltage across the two terminals. Let's say that the top terminal is terminal A, the bottom terminal is terminal B, and there will be some current flowing uh, from one circuit to another. That current could be positive or it could be negative. We're going to refer to A, this circuit, as being the source circuit. According to Thevenin's theorem, we can replace part A by one voltage source and one resistor in series such that V and I will be unchanged at the terminals of the B part of the circuit and therefore all the voltages and currents inside this B part of the circuit will also be unchanged. So let's redraw this circuit to show that part A has been replaced by one voltage source. We're going to call that V sub T for V thevenin and one resistor R sub T for R thevenin. It would be really nice to replace a very complicated part A of the circuit by one voltage source and one resistor, but please convince me that V and I would indeed remain unchanged, and also please tell me how to get R thevenin and V thevenin. Now two points make a straight line. Suppose we focus on this point. This is the current when the voltage is equal to zero. We can call that I short circuit. And let's look at this point. This is the voltage when I is equal to zero. Let's call that V open circuit. So that will be known for circuit A. Now what about the Thevenin equivalent? Let's, let's insert that into the picture. And now we have as an inset V sub T and R sub T. That will be the open circuit voltage for the Thevenin equivalent. There's zero current flowing. So there's zero volts across this resistor. So by KVL, minus V sub T plus zero plus V is equal to zero. So the open circuit voltage for the Thevenin equivalent is just equal to V sub T. Therefore, if the Thevenin voltage source is equal to the open circuit voltage of circuit part A, we've got one point in agreement between the Thevenin equivalent and the original circuit. What about the short circuit current? Here we've drawn a short circuit across the terminals A and B. We wish to know what is the current flowing through this short circuit. The voltage across the resistor by Kirchhoff's voltage law is going to be V sub T. And the current through the resistor by Ohm's law will be equal to V sub T over R sub T. And therefore, the current flowing through the short circuit is also V sub T divided by R sub T. Now, we have already said that V sub T is the open circuit voltage. If we choose R sub T, that V sub T over R sub T is equal to the short circuit current of circuit A, then we have also established the same short circuit current. And the two circuits will be equivalent to one another as far as whatever is plugged into them, as far as circuit B is concerned. So to summarize where we are up till now in our lesson, this will be the equivalent of circuit A if the Thevenin voltage is equal to the open circuit voltage of circuit A, 
And if R sub t is equal to the ratio of the open circuit voltage to the short circuit current. Going back to our original picture of the circuit being divided into two parts, part A and part B, I would just like to say that this is especially a useful concept whenever we have part of the circuit that essentially remains the same. But there's another part of the circuit that may change quite frequently. For example, if this is the source circuit, we may be plugging different boards into the terminals of that source circuit. The source circuit doesn't change, and therefore it's really great to be able to just replace it by its Thevenin equivalent. But what does change is the other part, part B. For another perspective on Thevenin's equivalent circuit, in particular how one gets the value of R Thevenin, consider this approach. Here we see part A of the circuit, referred to as the source circuit, described as a linear circuit, of course, and it has capital N independent sources. Uh, there could be any number of other linear circuit elements that are not sources in the circuit as well. And I'll just mention that for the moment we're assuming the absence of dependent sources to be considered in a later lesson. Attached to the two terminals is also a current source, and it has a value i. And we see the circuit parameter v. Now this is a linear system, so by superposition v may be expressed as a linear summation over the contribution of all the sources both the end sources in the box part of the circuit and the current source I that we've shown here explicitly. By the property of homogeneity, there will be a proportionality factor, K sub J, that allows one to determine the contribution of the Jth source to that voltage. So we're using both additivity and homogeneity property of linear systems to write down that V is due to a weighted summation of all the sources. Now continuing with this expression for V, suppose we turn off all the N sources in the part A circuit. In other words, the voltage sources are going to be set to zero, the current sources are going to be set to zero, or to say it another way, the voltage sources are going to be replaced by short circuits and the current sources are going to be replaced by open circuits. Now the only contributor to V is the current source I. So we can just say that V is equal to K sub naught times I. How does one interpret this quantity k0? And looking at that expression, v equals i times k0, think of Ohm's law, v equals ir. So k0 is the resistance seen by the current source i. It's the equivalent resistance seen looking back into the terminals of circuit A with all the sources turned off. Or r equivalent when all the voltage sources have been replaced by short circuits and all the current sources have been replaced by open circuits. Let's, instead of writing K0, just call that R sub LB. It is, in fact, the look back resistance. Now we can say that V is equal to I, the current source value, times the look back resistance, plus the contribution of all the independent sources inside the boxed area, inside the linear circuit part A. Let's look in more detail at the part of the expression that includes the contribution of the end sources in the circuit A to the voltage. If we set the current source equal to zero, in other words, if I equals zero, that is the current source is replaced by an open circuit, then the only contribution to V is from those end sources. And the voltage that results from the sources is what? Well, it would be the open circuit voltage. And we know from our previous discussion that the open circuit voltage is the Thevenin voltage. So the original expression relating the voltage V to a weighted summation over all the sources that can be expressed as I times the look back resistance plus the Thevenin voltage. One more key step. We now want to show that this look back resistance is in fact nothing more than the Thevenin resistance. To see this, let's replace that source circuit, the part A circuit, with the Thevenin equivalent. We know how to draw that. Next, use Ohm's law and Kirchhoff's voltage law to say minus V sub T minus I times R sub T plus V is equal to zero or V is equal to I times R sub T plus the threshold, plus the Thevenin voltage. Now compare that to the equation up on the top of the screen. They're exactly the same if we take R look back to be equal to R Thevenin. So R Thevenin may be found by using the look back method, kill all the sources, set them equal to zero, find the equivalent resistance, or 
We can also find R thevenin, as we previously noted, by finding the open circuit voltage and the short circuit current and taking their ratio. Those, both of those methods work. Thevenin's theorem also gives us insight into the general issue of power from a source circuit to something that's connected to the source circuit. Suppose we plug a resistor load into it and we want to know, well, what value of RL would give me maximum power transferred from the source circuit to the load? Well, power is equal to I times V, right? So if we say there's certain voltage across this load resistor, V sub L, and a certain current flowing through this, the power through for the load resistor is I times V, V sub L times I sub L. What is I sub L? I sub L is equal to V sub T divided by R sub T plus R sub L. That's just Ohm's law and some basic equivalent circuit concepts. What about the voltage, V sub L? By voltage division, V sub L is equal to the feminine voltage times RL divided by RT plus RL. And their product, the product of these two terms, is the load power. I'd like to write down their product up here. Let me erase the circuit. We see that the load to the power goes as V thevenin squared times the quantity RL, and in the uh, denominator, RL plus RT quantity squared. A picture is worth a thousand words, they say. So let's look at a plot of what the load power would look like as a function of R sub L. As R sub L goes to zero, we have zero inside the square bracket, so the power to the load is zero. Starting here, then as R sub L increases, we get an increase in power. But as R sub L gets much, much bigger than R sub T, it begins to go low. So there's going to be some maximum power. And at what R L will we get maximum power? Well, this is a good exercise in derivative calculus. I'm not going to go through it on the board here, but if you take the derivative of the load power with respect to uh, R sub L and set that equal to zero in the first derivative test to find the maximum, you will find that the load resistor for maximum power transfer is when R sub L is equal to R sub T. Now, we mustn't leave the topic of Thevenin's theorem without talking about Norton's theorem. From our previous lesson on equivalent circuits, we know that a voltage source in series with a resistor is equivalent as far as the rest of the circuit is concerned to a current source in parallel with a resistor, provided that the resistors are equal and provided that the current source and voltage source are related as I sub N is equal to V sub T over R sub T. So this is the Thevenin equivalent, and this is the Norton equivalent. I'd like to summarize that here on the board. R Thevenin equals R Norton is equal to V open circuit over I short circuit. R Thevenin equals R Norton can also be found, we're talking now about situations where we do not have dependent sources, where by R equivalent, we turn off all the independent sources and find the equivalent resistance. V Thevenin itself is equal to the open circuit voltage, I Norton is equal to the short circuit current, and I Norton and V Thevenin are related as I Norton is equal to V Thevenin over RT, and V sub T is equal to I sub N times R sub N. Thevenin's theorem and Norton's theorem, very useful tools for us as we proceed with solving circuits, analyzing circuits, and thinking of circuit design.